but I decided to go take a risk on my, on me and my dream and my unrealistic dream as so many people said you better have a backup plan you're gonna fail why even do that like well, how are you gonna support yourself all these things what if you get hurt You're back. Welcome to an inside look into the mind of Josh Perry. With that being said, I'm your host, Josh Perry. Uh, if there's any weird noises, scratches, or slurping of water, uh, we got Cheddar, my little puppy in the background. He is currently gated into his little bed area because he has a torn ACL and we have to keep him from being active, which is hard with a six month old puppy. So we're doing our best to keep him safe, let him heal. And that way we can get him back to being a puppy and running around hiking and jumping and all that good stuff. But I just got off a podcast with someone that I'll be sharing um, in the near future, depending on when you listen to this, it might already be out. But talking about my story and, uh, you know, the adversities I've overcome, the mindset shifts along the way, the perspective I've taken um, through this whole journey and the purpose I'm on. Uh, from all these experiences and the, the shift in lanes, if you will, that I've made and the route I'm on today, it's been an interesting ride. And something we talked about is the subconscious. And um, depending on how long you've been following me, you've probably seen a lot of my language shift into the subconscious and becoming conscious of our personality, which is made of our thoughts, our actions, and our emotions. And, you know, the, the route I decided to to take, to choose um, in my life was very unconventional, had a lot of risk, not many people succeeded at it, um, and there was a lot of unknown I wasn't aware of. I was ignorant, thankfully, going into it and have any time or opportunity to really think about these scenarios I've been through and who would have. You know, I was 17 when I decided to drop out of high school, move 13 hours away from my family to live with my friends and pursue the dream of becoming a professional BMX athlete and to become a professional athlete and sustain that for as long as I have, uh, I don't, it's, it's a rare percent of the population. I, I, I would need to look up the statistics. So if you have those, let me know. But I find that it's super rare that anyone, um, in life truly commits to a dream they have or something they want to do. And for many reasons, fear being the biggest one. And I've taken a lot away from Jim Carrey, you know, discussing fear and old, uh, well, not old, but like five, a little, a little about around five years ago, he gave a speech at a school and he talked about, you know, fear being an inevitable player in your life. But the cool thing is, is we decide on how big of a role this player has in our life and when that, that, that player is going to play. Um, something he also said is far too often do we as a society make choices disguised as practicality or we know we, we make choices as practicality disguised as fear or was it we make choices out of fear disguised as practicality i think that's what it is so basically we make choices in our lives that are fear driven from failure uh fear of judgment and fear of the unknown and fear even oftentimes of success of how that's going to change our reality and the way people are going to look at us and we usually disguise that as a practical choice you know like this makes sense i'm going to go to college i'm going to get this degree i'm going to get this job i'm going to do this and that when deep down we have an inner conflict because it's not what we truly want to do and maybe we're doing it because that's what we think we need to maybe we're doing it for other people maybe pressure from other people to live our life that way not to let people down like our parents um, or whatever reason it is and so there's this gap between how we truly feel inside and how we're perceived on the outside in this world that we're living in and this life that we're leading that's not who we truly are inside and I say this because I'm super grateful to have looked back on my life from, you know, the standpoint of being a 31 year old now. And when I was 17, making that decision to go all in on what I truly wanted to do in my life, what I felt I had to take an opportunity, a massive risk, leave everything behind to pursue this dream of mine, because I didn't think I had a chance. I didn't believe I had an opportunity when I was older to do this to, to, to make this uh, choice. And 
the situation I was in was, you know, like I said, I was 17 years old, but I was still living at home. I was going to high school. I was in a co-op program, which meant I was going to work for two weeks and then going to school for two weeks. Um, so basically I was going to academics for two weeks and then I was going to make money for the other two weeks. And then I was using that money to travel around the country to compete because uh, come my junior year of high school, I turned pro and BMX. And that ultimately led to an ultimatum between my boss and I. He gave me this choice. You know, you got to pick this position I have for you or your dream. Because ironically, the BMX season was in the summer and landscaping peak season was in the summer. And so he wasn't too thrilled at me taking a bunch of days off because I was going to school for landscape. I was going to technical high school. So I was actually being trained on how to do all this. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being outside, using my hands, you know, movement, taking something and turning into something else and being able to see the progress of what I did. You know, it was really fulfilling. But I was also really passionate about riding my bike. I was really passionate about the vision that I saw for myself and the vision I saw other people helping me create indirectly, you know, by witnessing what was possible. And so that ultimatum is ultimately what shifted the course of my life because I could have gone down the route and said, no, I'll just continue working with you and maybe, you know, have my own business one day. But I decided to go take a risk on my, on me and my dream. And my unrealistic dream, as so many people said, you better have a backup plan. You're going to fail. Why even do that? Like, well, how are you going to support yourself? All these things. What if you get hurt? All, you know, and my dad said, um, you know, he always told me to have a backup. He was proud of me. He supported me, but he's always made sure I had a backup plan up until, um, you know, five years ago or something, six years ago. I don't know, like a few years into my career. And he finally said, you know, you seem to uh, always make it make it work and you're happy and you're, you know, you're doing your thing, you travel in the world and you got plenty of time to go back to school or get a job later on. So keep doing your thing, you know, but there's still been a bunch of doubters and naysayers and negative people in my life since. And it's been my mission to show people what's possible in their life because I've gone through tremendous adversity and I'm starting to realize by talking with other people how much I downplay the things I've been through and the pain I've been through and the experiences, good or bad, whatever you want to call it, that I've experienced and witnessed. And it's it's pretty insane to reflect on, but at the end of the day, it's shown me what we're truly capable of once we believe in ourselves and go all in on the belief we have for ourselves and don't let other people, what I call uh, noise, you know, don't let the noise or outside influence affect how we are internally. And that's the page I'm on right now with was studying more about myself is my inner state of being, you know, or my state of being in general. And that's what we were talking about with the subconscious and the conscious. And had I had more time to develop into my more analytical mind and, you know, have my body running the show subconsciously and controlling my mind basically with the outside influences or all that noise and what other people believe and their perceived, you know, uh, ways of living based on their own insecurities and past failures or, you know, fears, I probably wouldn't have taken the route that I took. And now that I'm very aware of, you know, this piece between the subconscious and the conscious and how 95% of how we show up as an adult in life is subconsciously programmed and literally our body becomes our mind. It starts running the show. It starts influencing the mind. It's so comfortable in our patterns and our routines and it's an autopilot that it's hard to change. And that was a big topic we talked about is why change is hard. And, you know, so back to the, the notion of uh, my mission to be able to inspire people to see the potential they have once they truly believe in a vision they have for their life, uh, you know, there's nothing stopping them besides themselves. And they can blame it on this or that or them or that experience or that happened or this happened or whatever it is. But ultimately, all the external pieces in the external environment, the external world, anything outside of our own mind and body are influencing our thoughts, which influence a chemical response known as an emotion or feeling. And that's going to lead to influenced action in our life. That's going to trigger another emotional response or feeling, which is a chemical response in the body. That's going to then trigger the thoughts in our mind to be a certain way. And once we have this cycle of thoughts, creating feelings, influencing action, creating thoughts and emotions and all these experiences, that's, that's our state of being. That's our personality. The way we think, act, and feel is our personality. And our personality is what creates our personal reality. 
And if you don't believe me, think about it. Think about the thoughts you have. Are you even aware of them? Have you ever thought about your thoughts or the the fact that you're thinking about what you're thinking about? Um, And then see what kind of action that leads you to taking and how that makes you feel deep down. You know, so it's like, oh, someone, you know, said something bad about you. What did that trigger a thought of? You know, it triggered a thought of, you know, fear of judgment, or maybe you felt judged or inadequacy or unworthiness or shame or anger or, you know, sadness or any of these things. And then how did that make you feel? Maybe you stopped doing what you were doing that you were, you know, make, getting made fun of, or um, you never even tried because someone doubted you in the beginning, or, you know, you just changed your whole perspective of what you were doing and maybe you loved what you're doing and that person influenced how you move forward. You know, that's what I'm talking about. And so now that I'm very aware of that, I've seen a lot of, you know, why my reality is the way it is. And our external world is a reflection of our inner world. And so the people that live in lack and guilt and shame and anger and resentment and pain and suffering and the victim mentality, which we've all experienced, we're human. But the people have chosen to stay there. It's almost not their fault because they're not aware of what's happening on a psychological level deep down into their brain. And that's when the body becomes the mind. And so when someone's, you know, they've had enough or they're just inspired to make a change and they're on their their route making a change for like a week or so, and then all of a sudden they find themselves back in their own ways, that's their body controlling their mind or influencing the mind. That's the body running the show when the mind should be running the show. But because change leads to the unknown and uncomfortable feelings of the body and unfamiliarity it it leads the body to triggering thoughts that trigger emotions to go back to your old ways an example of this is let's say you're used to waking up at 10 a.m every day or 8 a.m whatever it is you're used to waking up at a certain time every day all of a sudden you want to wake up an hour or two earlier and i'm using this as a biased example because this is what i've been experimenting with the last uh, little over a month now but let's say you want to wake up an hour or two earlier and let's say you're 25 years old you've been waking up at 8 a.m every day and now you want to wake up at 6 a.m every day for you know let's say you wake up at 8 a.m the last four years of your life now all of a sudden you want to wake up at 6 a.m Now, what happens is your body has been waking up at that same time, doing the same thing, going to the bathroom, brushing your teeth, going to the bathroom, showering, putting on clothes, your slippers, whatever it may be, going to have breakfast and coffee and go to work or go to school, whatever it is. All of a sudden, you're changing the pattern. You're changing the habit, the routine, and the body feels very uncomfortable. It feels like they doesn't know what this is different. It feels unfamiliar with this new change. And that starts to send chemical triggers to the brain to create new thoughts that say, oh no, just sleep in because this is comfortable. You can get up you know, tomorrow, you can get up earlier tomorrow, or you can sleep in a little bit longer, it's okay. And then what happens? You go back to bed, you hit snooze, you don't get out of bed. And this is something that I struggle with and I'm overcoming. I'm getting better about overcoming this. And that's really taking the mind out of the body, reconditioning the body to a new mind. Um, and the reason I'm saying all this is because one of my biggest beliefs is we as a society walk around, majority of us, unaware or unconscious of our life, our thoughts, our actions, our feelings, our triggers, our emotions. And we may not enjoy our reality, and then we think we have no choice. We have no say in our reality. You know, it's just, that's just the way it is. You know, suck it up, accept it, move on. And we become resentful in our lives. We become unhappy. And then that leads to discomfort in the body and leads to dis-ease in the body. And that's what, you know, typically leads to disease in severe cases, you know. And it's all this stress response. Um, And the reason, again, I'm saying this is because I've been able to break that habit that I've experienced in my family and I experienced in my life. And the more aware I become of the habits I have around, you know, anything, the more able I am to create new change. And I'm not saying it happens overnight. I've been on this path for three years now trying to learn about my mind and why I do what I do and why I am the way I am and how something when I was younger you know, affected how I show up today with my personality. And my biggest thing that I've come to and where all this is leading to is my sense of having to have control in my life, no matter how many examples the universe throws my way to show me I have no control, I still have a sense of control and 
it's it's a mask for the insecurity I have uh, in general in my life of not feeling safe and secure deep down a hundred percent. And that stems back from a rough childhood from an abusive alcoholic stepfather. Um, and then that led into my early, you know, adult age of, you know, my twenties and being a professional athlete and dealing with injuries and brain tumor diagnosis and depression and stress and financial stress and being broke and living off of couches and things like that. Um, but now I'm aware of my sense of having to have control and why that is. And it's just the body trying to uh, feel comfortable and trying to ease the mind and the mind trying to ease you know, itself. And for so long, I let my body run the show. I was so unaware. I was so unconscious. The body was running everything. And I was doing these things in patterns that felt good and felt known and familiar. And I really experienced this challenge of change when I left BMX after over 10 years um, about 10 years professionally, but over half my life at the time to do what I'm doing today of serving and supporting people through my coaching business and speaking and creating content and just being a voice. Um, I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't even know to understand that the challenge I'd go through mentally and physically with creating this new version of myself, because for so long, I, all I did was ride my bike and anything else I did was to support riding my bike. And I was in a very selfish state. And now I say I'm on purpose to help other people because of what I've gone through and overcome and learned along the way. And it's my biggest uh, goal to show people the potential that we all have for our lives. Once we become aware of our lives, are uh, aware of our thoughts, our emotions and our actions and our habits and our routines and uh, the things we like, the things we don't like, and our reality in general and our state of being. Uh, you can't make change unless you're aware because it's only going to last for so long. You can only willpower it for so long until your body starts taking back over. And it's really once you become aware, you can create an alarm system to change in that moment and to at least become aware of it and then decide if you want to give into it, into that that choice moving forward in that day or that week or that month or even in that minute. And I go through this every morning when my alarm goes off uh, before I want to wake up and I have a conversation with myself and, I'm, and I say, am I going to really let my body win today or am I going to overcome myself? Am I going to overcome? And that's my second alarm. It's two minutes after my first alarm and it says overcome yourself. That's what it says. Overcome yourself. And it's because my body has been conditioned to do something for so long, yet I want to make a change but it's running the show, but not anymore because I'm conscious of it. I'm aware of it. And I'm continuing to learn and dive into all these aspects of my being and my reality and share these things with other people because I believe it's a game changer. So I kind of just went off a random tangent of how I was feeling after that conversation I just had on the podcast, which depending on when you listen to this, it, it could be out, it could not be out, uh, depending on when I post this. But I just really feel like that this is important information for people because I feel like so many people don't know who they are and don't know their purpose and are questioning their lives. And I'm, I'm right in there, you know, but the more I learn about myself, the more I'm aware of my reality that I live within and why it is the way it is and how I can change it, how I can optimize it because you can't optimize unless you're conscious. And some crazy facts are about 60 to 80% or 60 to 80,000 thoughts is how many thoughts we have on any given day. And 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before. And 50% of these thoughts aren't even real. They're just made up perceptions of our past experiences and the emotions that they've created and how we feel. And 95% of how we show up in life as a 35 year old adult or older is a subconscious autopilot program. Literally, our brain is not just hardware, it's software. and the different parts of the brain become programmed and unless you become conscious of that and then learn techniques like meditation and visualization and breathing to tap into that hard or that software to reprogram it you're going to live as the program and the first step is to become conscious aware become the observer and then you can move into becoming the programmer and that's when the fun really starts to happen you can really a law of attraction you've heard a law of attraction manifestation and it, it really it, there's no coincidences or I, you know, I, that's, I, you know, whatever it's, I speak from experience. Once you start making these changes and believe in the changes, you start seeing the outer world reflect those inner changes. And it's just an example of the work you're doing working. And so again, I just kind of went off on another tangent, but 
I think this stuff, I believe this stuff's super important. And if you want to learn more, I would definitely recommend reading the book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, How to Lose Your Mind and Create a New One by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And if you want to talk, reach out. Let's have a conversation. You know, um, all social media is at Josh Perry BMX. Shoot me a message. Website, joshperrybmx.com. Shoot me an email through there. Leave a comment wherever you're listening or, you know, to this episode. And I'd love to hear from you. But I really just think this stuff's really important. I believe this stuff's really important. And I think it can, I believe it can help a lot of people. Uh, it's helped me tremendously. So if you listen to this podcast episode to this point, I appreciate your time. I know time is very valuable. You could have chosen to do something else with your time, but instead you listen to this and I appreciate you for that. Uh, I appreciate the love and support for all the people that have been with me for any time, whether it's your first time or you've been with me for the last years, decade and more of my life. Uh, I appreciate you guys. And yeah, I just want people to know you're, you're not alone. You know, you're not, you're not weird. You're not broken. You're not, you know, abnormal. Like you're, you're just you. And if you can become conscious of who you are and why you do the things you do and why your life is the way it is and not give power to the outside world by giving excuses to anything besides your own being, life can really change. And I've been experiencing that and I've been diving into that more and I just can't help but share it more and more. So again, I appreciate you. I believe in you. If you don't believe in yourself, reach out and I'll help you see that. I'll help you see the potential that we all have once we believe in ourselves. And I've been pushed to the limits to where I've wanted to give up on several occasions. And I've had people in my life that have figuratively and literally given up in their life. And it's put me on this path even more and it's inspired me more to want to share these things and to let go of my ego and my fear of judgment and fear of failure and just be me and do the things I want to do, which is help people and enjoy my life along the way. So again, I appreciate you all. I hope you all are living your best life and becoming conscious of all the things that make up you and your life. And I'll talk to you in the next episode.